Hello, this is an overview of Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis's Shell Eco Marathon vehicle for 2019. I'm Chris Barzo, the team leader for this year. We'll start with a general overview of our team and some past history, our benchmarks, and our goals for this year. And then most importantly, we'll talk about the design of the vehicle and where we're at right now and where we plan to be in the next couple months. Our team consists of nine students from IUPUI. We're mostly engineering and STEM students. However, we do extend to a few liberal arts students who are also excited and eager to work on this project with us. We have a very ambitious goal this year. We're building an entirely new vehicle from scratch, something that we've never done before other than our very first year, um, obviously. And we're doing this because we think we can make a better vehicle if we just start over. We also have um, some access to a few new exciting resources, which I'll talk about later, which we plan on incorporating. So first we'll talk about the electronics. There's a general block diagram of our, of our propulsion and energy from our battery to the ground. So our energy obviously starts out in our battery and is sent to a power station where we have a BMS, a battery management system, and our power array. Battery management system is in charge of all the safety compliant hardware and concepts such as your voltage cutoff, voltage cell balancing, and power cutoff. You have thermal um, cutoff, and as well as a few other features. A power array is mainly there for organization, for power between our controller and ESC, as well as a little bit of feedback and filtering to improve that performance. And then our main power goes to our ESC. Our ESC powers our motor, which of course drives our vehicle forward and changes our location. Location is sent back to our main controller via a GPS module. And based on our exact location and given that the track data is imported into our controller, we can improve, we can in have a feedback loop to our ESC, which will overall improve our performance. Our motor this year is a in-hub bike wheel motor normally, but we're using it for our car. This is a pretty popular motor used at Shell Eco Marathon that we've noticed, and we wanted to give it a try because we like the, the lightweight that it offers, and that's mainly because we don't need all the other equipment to mount a motor onto our chassis, we also save space, and they're actually very efficient as well. We're using an internally geared motor so that we can coast without regeneration or any resistance from back EMF, and that'll let us go farther without applying any throttle. It is also censored, which makes easier to design our ESC, which is in this next slide. Here's a general schematic of where we're at right now with our ESC. It is very basic, pretty much as bare bones as you can get with a BLDC sensor motor. It simply takes in the hall, of, uh, hall sensors, which are either high or low, from each of the three hall sensors in our motor. And depending on those, we can know where our rotor position is. Based on our rotor position, we send three different signals, or sorry, six different signals, two, six different MOSFET drivers, and those will be a combination, or uh, those are put into a combination to drive our motor forward. Now, obviously, you can't use an Arduino Nano, which we know we include in here because it has to be purpose built. So, this is tentative, and we're working on improving our current design, what we have here, and getting baseline parameters of our motor before we go and swap that out for just a raw microcontroller and and uh, auxiliary components for that. Let's talk about the mechanical design. First we'll start with the chassis. Here's a picture of our chassis. We have a 41 inch wheelbase and 24 inch track width. Uh, we've just chosen these numbers and our Ackerman angle to minimize drag. We also want to make our vehicle as small as possible uh, to also help us minimize drag and weight. We're using 7075 aluminum U-channel, which is very, very lightweight and strong. 
However, we can't really bend it, or we can't really weld it, sorry. So we're using bolts and rivets to hold it together. As you can see, um, there are some little details of holes and hole patterns in that picture. We're using 20 inch wheels, pretty basic um, bread and butter of Shelly Marathon vehicles. And it is reinforced by some polyurethane foam. And what I mean by that is that there is some foam stuffed down the channels of these, of these um, aluminum U-channels to help improve the torsional strength because the polyurethane foam is very lightweight and strong in compression. Here is the body. It is just a streamlined profile that is built around our chassis and our driver. It has been minimized for the volume that we're given and minimized drag overall volume which will minimize the weight of it. We're going to make this out of carbon fiber this year which is new for us. We've never made a carbon fiber body like this. It won't be a structural monocomp design like a lot of teams. However, it will provide a very, very lightweight and low drag skin shell for our body, for our car that we haven't been able to do in the past. So we're very excited for this. It's a little bit bigger than most people's. As you can see here, it's 100 inches long. You'll typically see most cars around 90 or so inches, probably a little bit shorter than this. But we wanted to accommodate for a wider range of drivers in the future. Uh, so we made it a little bit bigger to more comfortably fit a driver. Our coefficient of drag for this shape is 0 0.051. And here's our final product. So this is a chassis, the body, and electronics, and there's also a bulkhead in there. And this will be pretty much what our vehicle will look like, other than uh, the transparency of it, of course. And we will, or this is what we'll be finishing in the next couple months here. So far, where we've just begun are working on manufacturing our chassis, we also started manufacturing our plug for our body and we're testing our electronics now. So in the next couple months we plan on finishing all this so that we can finish early and do a lot of tests to improve and see what we can do to make it even better. Overall our vehicle weighs 38 pounds which is very light for most Jelly Co Marathon vehicles but this doesn't include safety equipment such as your um, fire extinguisher, your seatbelt and battery, which is not safety equipment, but that's not calculated in there because we don't know exactly what size of battery we will use, but we can expect it to be just a couple pounds. So we're pretty lightweight, and overall, it's looking to be a very great design and a very exciting project. So that's all for our overview. We're very excited for going to Shell Eco Marathon Americas this April, and we'll see you there in Sonoma.